Hi friends, it's me Genuine Coder. Today we will talk about JavaFX observables. This video is divided into three parts. In the first part, I will talk about what is an observable and how it is actually useful for us. In the second section, we will use this observable in an actual application so that you guys can understand how to use an observable properly in a real world application. Then in the third section, we will talk about the observable list. Observable list is a very important data structure in JavaFX. So let us begin now. Let us start with the definition of an observable. According to JavaFX documentation, an observable is an entity that wraps content and allows to observe the content for invalidation. What that actually means is, suppose you have a variable and whenever you make changes to the content of the variable, you will get a call back or you can execute a certain set of code whenever the value of a variable is changed. Let us discuss this with an example first. Let's say we have an integer. This is a normal code. This is a scenario where we use normal code. So we have int a equals 10 and int b equals 10. And let's say int sum equals, equals a plus b. And we print the sum. So the output is 20 here. And then we change the value of EA to 20. Previously it was EA, now we change that to 20. And if we are printing the sum once more, the result will be same. Actually, the value of EA is now 20. And if we calculate the A plus B now, the sum should be 30, but it is actually 20. So suppose we want to track the sum automatically with the values of A and B. In that case, we can use this observable. Let's talk about the ops implementing the solution with an observable. So we have observable integer a equals 10. This is just a uh, pseudo code, nothing official. So then we have observable integer b equals 10. Then you are calculating an observable sum value using a and b by summing a and b then if you print the sum right now it will be 20 actually then if you change the value of a to 20 and then you are printing the sum again it will be 30 automatically you see we haven't recalculated the sum with the sum equal to a plus b with observable whenever you change the value of a the sum will be automatically changed so that is just a theory part now let us see this in action and see this for ourselves now let us start the coding this is a simple java fx fxml application created in netbeans it is a, an empty application that actually does nothing if you run the application you will get a blank window that's all so first let us write the non-observable case that we have discussed about summing two variables so i'm going to write some non-observable now let us write the simple summing application so we need a variable a and i'm going to assign it's just 10 then we need one more variable let's say b which is also 10 then let us create this sum of this a and b by giving in sum equals a and b now if we write this or print this one the sum will be 20 no confusion there now if i set this value of a to 20 and print it again now also it will be 20 because this change a equals 20 won't affect this sum we have to recalculate some in order to get the updated value of it let us just make sure that by running this program and as you can see it is 20 in both cases now let us talk about the observable case let us write one more method sum observable and let me create that method oops sorry okay so we have this one so instead of using this native integer type 
we have special type for observable variables so instead of int we have symbol integer property so symbol integer property is is a observable alternative for integer so if you want to store float or double you have those like symbol double property is there so for now i'm going to use symbol integer property and let us set the value of value by a so this is equivalent to int a equals 10 just the observable fashion that's all now we have to repeat this again to create b now if you look at the methods of the observable class that is the option like add already i mean add is already available as a parameter rather than using this plus symbol so i'm going to use this add and i'm adding a with b now so definitely we have to store the return value so if you check this return value it returns a number binding so number binding sum equals a add b so that's it this sum will always be binded to the value of a and b so let us just go ahead and print the sum value now so a out sum printing just a sum won't be enough you can get the value by using this get value remember this is not just integer value this is a binding so you have to call this get value then what i'm going to do is i'm going to update the value of a so that can be done using a dot set i'm going to update that to 20 just like we did here then i'm going to print the value once more now there is no need to call this sum non observable class so i'm going to comment that one and now this sum observer will be called so let us run this program and as you can see first value is 20 and second value is 30 and that's it because once you change the value of 20 the sum also got changed so that is just one case let us now let us talk about how to use or make use of this observable in actual real world application this is the second part as we discussed in the introduction so i have a sample application prepared for you so what this will do is if you type something here it is automatically updated in the bottom also i mean in the second text field this is one advantage or one illustration of the binding and here also we have one animation this one is also done using the string binding technique so let's see how we can do a project like that so this is our project we have our fxml document let me open this fxml file in the scene builder so this is scene builder i am going to import one text field in order to show the text as we have seen before so i have this text in the center i'm going to set the text alignment to center i want to increase this uh, text size by a little bit i'm going to change this to google sans medium that's a good font you guys if you guys haven't tried this google sans font it is worth trying and let us give a stroke like one so it will look a little bit better so maybe 0.5 yeah 0.5 is good and i'm going to mark this as a and in the code section i'm going to give an id so let's say this is our label so we can reference it as label in the program now let us come back to no before that let me just increase the size it is too small i think it seems so i'm going to increase that to 61 okay now everything is good i'm going to use the make controller and now i call the label now let us see how we can do or how we can change it in a animation to use it in an animation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a string property so just like this simple integer property there is simple string property for string so simple string property text equals new simple string property and here you can give the initial value i'm going to give the initial value as a and regarding the animation i have already prepared one timer task here 
so I don't have to waste your time on doing that so what this will do is it will take the first character from this simple string property text so which is in the, the there will be only one character so in this case it will take a then it will take it into an integer variable so it will be represented as a number then we just increment that one so if it is a it will become b integer value then we have to convert that integer value into character which can be done using a cast with character type then this one so what this will actually do is it will find the next immediate character so after set it will take next task value we are not concerned about that one so that's it so i have this my task now we have to start this my task if you have if you guys haven't used this timer task it is very useful for repeated operation let me show you how you can use them so first we have to create an object obviously so my task task equals new my task so you have the task got created now in order to repeat this task over and over again i want to repeat this in every one second which can be done using a timer so timer timer equals new timer and i am going to set this as a daemon thread so, so no problem there then i'm going what i'm going to do is i'm going to set timer schedule so there is an option called schedule at fixed rate so if you give this task here and give one second here then during every one second or in the interval of one second this task method will be called uh, this task object will be called which will call this run method so in effect this will be called in every one second and you can give an initial delay also so i'm going to give it as initial delay 1000 now if you run this program nothing will happen see nothing is happening because we have in attached this property with our label now somehow we have to bind this labels text property with this text so that whenever we change this text the label will also automatically get updated so that can be done using this way so label dot text property so we have a text property so what this is is a string property actually so it is an observable property dot bind so you can bind it in this way then you can queue this text here so netbeans automatically completed the code and now if i run this program now you can see that this is changing so in every second we are changing the value of this text we are not explicitly setting this label each and every time it is automatically updated because we are binding this property with this text property of ours so that is one directional binding whenever there is a change in this text this text property will be updated but in the vice versa case if you change this text property this text won't be changed so if you want to do that there is an option called bind bind directional so let me make that clear to you using one more example so let's use a text field so we have this text field here let me paste it right there and let me create one more so we have to give an id so i'm going to refer it as tf1 and i'm going to refer this as tf2 so let us come back to this fxml we got this tf1 and tf2 now let's say let us say i am binding let us uh, let me show you the difference between one directional binding and two directional binding so first let me bind this guy with this guy so this is called tf1 this is called tf2 okay now i'm going to type tf1 dot text property we are binding the text property you can bind any property like this bind so i'm going to bind it in one directional fashion so bind it with the text property of the second guy okay now let's see what happens if we type on tf1 so i'm going to type as genuine coder here so 
I can't type anything here because it is binded with that one but if if I type here now genuine coder it is changing in the tf2 because the value of tf1 is the value of tf2 but if I press the back button I am currently type uh, click uh, pressing on the back button but nothing is happening so if you use bind bidirectional whenever there is a change in the text of tf2 it will be affected the tf1 and if there is a change in tf1 it will affect tf2 like that so i'm going to type genuine coder now i can type here and if i click on or press on backspace you can see it is changing both ways so both are now completely connected so that's about the second part so that is the end of this video in this part we talked about what is an observable and using observable in an actual application in the very next video we will talk about observable list and how it is useful for us i, I will leave the link for this observable list part in the description so as always thank you for watching this video like the video if you like it and subscribe for more